Welcome to Witness Wednesdays here on the Walk Boldly with Jesus podcast. I am your host, Katherine Duggan. However, each Wednesday, I will have a guest give their witness of how God is working in their lives. Hearing how God is working in other people's lives shows us how deeply He cares for each one of us individually. Listening to these experiences will help your faith grow. I am so blessed to be able to share these with you. Let's get started. Our guest speaker today is my friend Mary. I met Mary because our husbands were both stationed at the same military base. Mary is going to give us her witness about how God helped her through the most difficult year and a half of her life. She talks about the two terrible losses she suffered, how her husband was deployed to a war zone in the middle of all that grief, and then how God saved her life in a miraculous way. I know you are really going to enjoy this witness and maybe have some tissues nearby just in case, as I know I was teary-eyed when I listened to this. Without further delay, take us away, Mary. Hello, everyone, and thank you for allowing me to share my testimony with you today. I keep seeing the word Job, <laughs> and I it's funny because when I first started thinking about how to give this testimony, it was going one way, and I prayed and asked God to take it away you know, take over. (laughs) And so I've seen scripture from Job being quoted on my Facebook feed over and over again. So God was kind of telling me exactly what he wanted me to share with you. So it is an honor and a privilege to share this testimony with you. I am a very emotional person. And so I may cry. (laughs) Please forgive me if I do. (laughs) What I'm going to tell you about today is very emotional because when we think about life and death situations, I mean, you can't get more emotional than the thought of loss. So anyway, this is my story. My story is comparable to Job, but I say it's Job in reverse. (laughs) And so seeing the verses about Job kind of, you know, reminded me that It doesn't matter what we go through. God is there for us. So I'm going to tell you about a very terrible year and a half. And sometimes we go through storms and they're just a couple of hours. Sometimes we go through storms and they're days and weeks. Sometimes we go through storms and they're months. Um, There was a point in my life where I went through a storm for a year and a half. (laughs) So... I compared my, my story to Job a little bit because it just seemed like you think one thing is bad and then another thing happens and it just continues to snowball. So here is my worst year and a half. (laughs) So back in 2005, I lost my grandmother and Um, I had been an adult returning to college and I went to go to my graduation. And when I was away at my graduation, my grandmother passed away. So I came back and, um, you know, it was bittersweet because I had graduated, but then I had lost my grandmother who I was very close to. My mother was also very close to her. And when her mother died, she, definitely turned in her feelings towards her fight with cancer. She had been diagnosed six years earlier and fought cancer. And she had thought, we thought it had been in remission. And so one day she started getting sick and it was the the cancer's returning that was making her sick. Um, At that point, it was March and she passed away April 14th. So it was very quick. It came back with a vengeance and that cancer 
just kind of took over and it was absolutely excruciating to watch her fight this battle and lose. We had prayed. We prayed so much, but you know, God's will. The answer to prayer is not always what we want it to be. So to add insult to injury with the loss of my very young mother, shortly after losing my grandmother, my husband had orders to Iraq and this was the time of the war going on. And at that point I had a little baby girl and I would still venture to say a toddler, <laughs> my son, he was four and my daughter was less than, less than one. Uh, my husband was going to Iraq two weeks after my mom passed away. So here I was not able to grieve, not properly. My kids needed me to get out of bed every single day. So I did. And I put on that brave face like every mom has to do when they don't want to get out of bed and life is just throwing punches at them, but you do it anyway, because you love your kids and it's the right thing to do because we tend to women, we moms, we tend to put, you know, everybody ahead of ourselves. And at this point I knew I had to put my grieving to the side. And then on top of that, dealing with the idea of my husband going off to war, it was just all so much. Um, at that point I had enrolled in law school and I was super excited to start that process. And then once my mom passed away, it just, it was just too much for me to deal with. I started reading tort law about people suing each other over things that in the grand scheme of things with the loss of a parent and a husband at war, those things did not seem important. And so I contacted the school and advised them that I needed to take a break because I was not in a good place to focus in on the classes that I was taking at that point. And I would return someday, but not right now. Right now I need to take care of my kids and I need to get myself out of bed every day. <laughs> so um, while my husband was in Iraq, he got orders for PCS. That's a permanent change of station. So when you're in the military, you get orders to move on to your next base or location. And so while he was gone, um, you know, I started preparing started getting the house ready, packing up the things for the kids that we could live without purging things that we didn't need. All military wives become really good at that over the years. Um, so after his deployment to Iraq was over, he did come home safely and our little family was back together again. Praise the Lord. So we went and we moved to the new location and we got there in January and when we got there, we immediately found a church and I'm so, so glad, so blessed that we did because that church was vital uh, to our success through this very, very awful year and a half. <laughs> so we luckily found this amazing church and these people in the church that were basically family to us. And so when I truly needed them. They were there for me. One day I felt this pop in my abdomen and I, I didn't know what it was, but it was so incredibly painful. I immediately went into the fetal position and started just kind of, you know, trying to put as much pressure on my abdomen as I could. And I couldn't move. If I moved, it hurt so bad. So I was in this fetal position. And of course, you know, my husband is very kind and loving and supportive and is saying, you know, I'll take you to the emergency room. Let's, let's go to the emergency room. And I looked at him and I told him if I move, I might die. 
And so I was able to get to my side of the bed and I was able to get myself prepared for, you know, just to lay there overnight. My husband took care of everything that needed to be taken care of with the house and the kids. And I lay there and I thought to myself that I might die. And I had just lost my mother and I had just lost my grandmother before that. I mean, just months before that. And I thought to myself that my children were going to grow up without a mother and they were going to grow up without a grandmother. And I just started thinking all those thoughts. So the next morning I woke up still in horrible pain. And I, when I woke up in pain, I was happy that I woke up in pain because it meant I was still alive. When I fell asleep that night, I had an idea that I would probably not wake up from, from the night that I would probably die in my sleep because the pop that I felt in my abdomen was just so painful and the pain that I was experiencing all night long, I just really thought I was going to die, but I didn't, I woke up and I was thankful for the pain because I knew I was alive and I knew I felt the, (laughs) I felt being alive in a way that I had never felt being alive before. So uh, I went to the doctor. I did end up going to the doctor and they told me that I just had female problems. And so of course, you know, that's an easy answer, but no, that wasn't it. So I went back home, did what they told me to do. They gave me some medication to help me with the pain. And I went back to the doctor again because it hadn't gone away. And so after several times of going to the doctor, uh, one time I went to the emergency room and that doctor that I saw was such a blessing. He pulled my husband to the side and he said, I want you to leave here and I want you to go directly to the other emergency room at the hospital uh, down the road. And um, he said, your wife is very sick. And she needs all the testing done that I can't do for you right now. He said, but you need to go to the emergency room as soon as you leave here. Don't do anything else. Go directly to that emergency room. And so my husband followed his directions and we went to the other emergency room. So there we went. And of course, immediately their first thought was, I have female problems. Ladies, you know how that goes. (laughs) It's so easy to just blame pains and things in your abdomen on female problems, but I digress. (laughs) I had a CAT scan and I had an ultrasound and both of those tests showed that I had an ovarian cyst the size of a grapefruit. So my doctor came in and he explained to me that the test showed that I had uh, the, this grapefruit size ovarian cysts and that I was going to need surgery and that I needed to, uh, get with one of the GYN doctors and set up an appointment because I was going to need to have surgery. It didn't need to be done immediately, but that I was going to need it because sometimes those cysts have a tendency to twist and turn. And so his explanation for my pain was probably that it was starting to twist or move around in some way. And that was what was causing my pain. So I did what they said. I went home, you know, um, I read the discharge papers and they didn't discuss it with me, but on there, they put possible cancer and I had just lost my mother to cancer. And it was the strangest thing because she had died of lung cancer at the age of 56. She had never smoked a day in her life, but the type of cancer that she had was lung cancer. So I knew that I had a horrible family history of weird illnesses. And so my mind began to race and I started thinking that I needed to make a video of myself for my children because my little less than one year old daughter would never remember me. And my four year old son may remember me, but probably not. So I started talking to my husband. We had hard conversations about what were the next steps. I told him, I think, I, you know, if I die, I, I, I might be dying. I may be dying. I need to 
maybe do some videos of myself for these kids. Of course, you know, no couple wants to sit and have that conversation. Um, so it ended up just kind of being talk. And at that point, I was still very sick. And we didn't end up making the videos because we had just recently moved. Nobody knew where the video recorder was. It wasn't in the time of iPhones and everybody had a video system on their phone. <laughs> it was before that. So I went the next morning to uh, the base doctor and I took my paperwork from the hospital and I went to the GYN area and talked to someone and I said, I'm very new here. I do not know, how, you know, where I need to go to get an appointment. Do I have to see my primary care? Do I just make an appointment with you? Um, and a very sweet nurse, just the kindest lady took my papers and she sat with me and she talked to me about what my papers said about what they meant about all of the scary words on that paper. And we talked through and she said that if they thought it was cancer, they probably would have talked to me about that, not just written it on the paper, but they were probably just trying to make sure that they covered all their bases. Um, but she said, I absolutely needed to have surgery pretty quickly. And so she set me up with an appointment with the surgeon um, I did see the surgeon within a few days. And meanwhile, I'm still very sick, still very much in pain, losing color. My olive tone skin was gray, just this ugly gray. <laughs> um, you could see this, the life draining out of me. Um, I look like a shell of myself. And so when I went to the hospital, my new pastor had joined us. He sat in the waiting room with my husband. Um, this was supposed to be just a very simple surgery and not take very long at all. But, uh, you know, <laughs> when you don't know, you don't know. And so, um, prior to going into surgery, I had called my church, uh, from back at the previous place where we were and let them know that I needed their prayer. Uh, my new pastor had, you know, me on the prayer chain at the new church and everyone was praying for us. And he was in the waiting room praying for me, praying with my husband. My husband was on the phone praying with everybody he could think of to pray with. So my, my relatively short surgery um, ended up taking much, much longer. I wake up in the recovery room and I asked what time it was. And it was a great deal of time later. I think it was like eight or nine hours later, and it was only supposed to be a couple of hour surgery, um, but it had been an eight or nine hour <laughs> ordeal for me. So I wake up and my husband and my pastor come in and they start telling me that the GYN doctor came out and told them that there was no ovarian cyst. There was no grapefruit size ovarian cyst. A grapefruit size ovarian cyst had shown up on a CAT scan and an ultrasound, but when the surgeon went in, it was not there. So uh, they, he had to call in a generalized surgeon. And so the general surgeon had to uh, try to figure out what was happening with me because when the GYN surgeon opened me up to get rid of this ovarian cyst that did not exist, he noticed that I had internal bleeding. And so I had been bleeding internally for 10 days at that point. So my husband and my pastor, you know, they told me all of the details. And basically what happened was the general surgeon had to take all of my uh, intestines out and start looking at them inch by inch to figure out where I was bleeding from. And so he did. And finally, he found on my colon where I had this very rare thing that doctors find in medical books, but my doctor said that it's, you know, doctors will probably never see a case like that in their lifetime because it only happens one in so many million. Um, but I had these three little tumors on my colon and each one had their own blood supply. And one of the little tumors burst and that was the pain, the pop that I felt. And so he removed the other tumors and, you know, closed the wound. And I was able to 
you'll be able to come out of that surgery in a very good place. I had a big recovery to deal with at that point though, because, because of the tumors being in my colon and one of them bursting, everything that went through my colon actually had access to be pushed out into my abdominal cavity. So not only was I bleeding internally, but I had all of the waste that was going through my colon was going into my abdominal cavity as well. Um, I am truly a walking miracle. I know that God just had his hand on me. And if it hadn't been for that ovarian cyst, that grapefruit size ovarian cyst showing up on the ultrasound and the CAT scan, they would have just written me off as female problems. And no one would have ever looked for what I had. No one would have known what I had. Nobody would have known I was bleeding internally. And so I spent a year in recovery. And during that time, my church family, they had known me only for months. We moved in January. This happened in April, the beginning. It happened Easter weekend. And it was towards the beginning of April. And this church family, they just helped me. They came in and they just loved on us. Um, they took care of my children. They cleaned my house. Um, they drove me places. Uh, they brought us food. We had a couple come and iron our clothes. <laughs> just an amazing blessing. And I know I am a walking miracle. Those tests prove that I had this ovarian cyst, but when I went into surgery, I did not have it. I bled internally for 10 days and I survived this tumor popping and all of the ugliness going through my colon coming into my abdominal cavity. And it took me a year to recover. But what an amazing miracle. I was a walking miracle. And I praise God for that. It has been now 15 years since that's happened. And I just praise God because of the life that he's let me have here on earth. And I know that he has even greater plans for me in the afterlife. But what an amazing gift to be able to raise my children. My daughter just became a senior in high school. So I just praise God for this miracle that he gave me. And I appreciate you allowing me to share my testimony with you. And I thank you so much. And I pray God's blessings for you. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I can't imagine having that much loss all at once. You were very strong to be able to be there for your kids. I know how hard to handle a regular deployment is. I can't imagine if I had had that much loss right before my husband left. I can't believe the miracle of the cyst showing up on two different tests just so you could get the surgery you needed. God is so awesome how he works. I am so grateful for all the miracles that went into saving your life. Thank you again for sharing and being so open and honest about your journey. Come back anytime. We have all seen God working in our lives. However, we might not all be aware it is God working in our lives. This is why it's so important we start talking about it more. The more we share our experience, the more people will understand how God works and how much he truly loves us. If you would be willing to share any experience you've had of how God has worked or is working in your life, please email me at katherine at findingtruenorthcoaching.com. And that's C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E at findingtruenorthcoaching.com. Or just click on the link below. It won't take up much of your time, and your story could be just the story that someone needs to hear today. Prayerfully consider sharing. Everyone has a story, and the world needs to hear them. I look forward to spending time with you again tomorrow. And I will have another witness for you next Wednesday. Have a blessed day.